Hey guys welcome back. This story is about what if Naruto was trained by Might Guy. Might Guy trades Neji and Tenten to take Naruto and Hinata on his team. Can he take this group of misfits and turn them into a team of geniuses? Or will he be forced to give up wearing spandex forever? Before we start thank you for all of the support it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave a like you can suggest a Naruto fanfiction with a link in the comments if you want me to read it. And check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and support them for making this fanfic. So let's start. Chapter 9. Battle on the Bridge. I see that you've decided to do exactly as I said, my guy. I'm kind of surprised. Zabaza's voice resounded throughout the thick mist. Where are you? Where's Lee? Guy shouted as he looked around, unable to spot anyone. Guy sensei. I'm right here. Lee's voice came from straight in front of him. Guy squinted hard and two figures slowly became visible. Lee. Guy shouted happily. He was all right. At the very least he was alive. What a touching reunion. Zabuza said mockingly. But let's not forget why we're all here. What's your angle here Zabuza? I have two people you want, you only have one. Guy eyed the man carefully. How about we make this a little interesting? Zabuza drawled out slowly. I'll send Lee and you send Haku out halfway. They can fight each other for their freedom. I refuse. You're sick. Guy swow him down instantly. Zabuza roared with laughter at Guy's immediate refusal. You don't have a choice. Either take it or I'll cut his head off right here. Zabuza grabbed onto his sword as he spoke. Tisk. Guy looked down to Haku and nodded him forward. I'm sorry. Haku whispered so Zabuza couldn't hear. As he stepped forward, he drew his Sinban needles. Go on, brat. Zabuza looked down at Lee as he spoke. It does not have to be this way. You can still take my offer. Come with us. Lee had yet to take a step forward. Get going. Zabuza turned his gaze away from him. Lee stared at him for another few seconds. Goodbye, Zabuza-san. Lee whipped out a kanai and also took a few steps forward. Tazuna watched in panic as Lee and Haku walked up to each other. The bridge was now completely silent except for the footsteps of the two shinobi, as they got closer and closer. The anxiety was almost too much for the older man's heart. Hey. Tazuna whispered to Guy, shouldn't you join him? This is much too risky. What if Zabuza attacks? Guy kept a grim expression as he stared forward. Zabuza won't move. He wants to test my nerves. He wants me to make a mistake. Tazuna looked back to Lee. He really hoped Guy was right. The two shinobi stopped ten paces from one other. Please, make this a most youthful battle. Lee brought his kanai up in front of himself as he spoke. He smiled at his opponent, a very tight ped one. I would rather not fight you at all, if it can be helped, I would rather not kill you. Haku raised his sinban to throwing position. That makes two of us. Lee's smile dropped and his look became completely serious. Naruto-san and Hinata-san have been training hard since the incident. You'd be proud of them. Haku threw the Sinban and vanished a second later. Lee easily deflected all of them and then looked for his opponent. I would expect nothing less from my teammates. Lee looked down to see his shadow growing. Realizing that Haku was above, he jumped backwards just as Haku landed on the ground where he had been. His Sinban struck dangerously low into the bridge. Still in mid-air from his jump, Lee whipped his kanai at his foe. Haku easily ducked out of the way and charged at Lee again. The second Lee's feet touched the ground he was off like a rocket. Haku hardly had time to block the fist aimed towards his face. Haku dropped low a performed a sweeping kick. Lee jumped over it and countered with a kick. Haku caught his leg. You are quite fast. Haku acknowledged. It is apparent it will take more than taijutsu to determine the outcome of this match. Haku began forming hand signs with his free hand. He's using his keke jenke. Guy took a step forward but stopped himself. Unfortunately, Taijutsu is all I have. However, I will make it enough to beat you. Lee pulled his leg back and freed it from Haku's grasp. He landed in a crouching position. Just then, he noticed ice shards coming at him from every direction. What? Lee quickly launched himself into the air to avoid being skewered. Lee can't watch this battle. Not like this. Guy felt himself inclined to run to his student that he hadn't seen for two weeks. Wait right there, Mike Guy, I want to see this play out. Unless you want me to go for the bridge builder. Zabuza laughed again as Guy paused where he was. He grit his teeth. Zabuza was right and he knew it. He couldn't leave Tazuna's side just yet. 
Li landed on the ground just as a spike of ice swao from it at him. Li quickly moved to the side. Two more swao at him from his left and right and Li was barely able to duck under these. He rolled sideways to avoid yet another spike that came from water that littered the bridge. Zabuza had prepared this beforehand. As Li jumped up from his roll the water beneath him turned into solid ice. Li quickly lost his footing and slid painfully to the ground. He looked up to see Haku flying at him again, Sinban ready. Now I got you. I'm sorry, Tazuna-san, Li needs my help. Guy swow forward but Zabuza immediately stood in his path. Out of my way. Guy shouted as he swung at the shirtless ninja. Zabuza used the broad side of his sword as a shield from Guy's punch. If that's how you want it, then you leave me no choice. Zabuza jumped back, slung his sword onto his back and put his hands together. The mist quickly intensified until Guy could barely see his own hand in front of him. This mist is too thick even for you Zabuza, how do you expect to fight like this? Guy shouted into the white fog. He started looking around for any sign of his opponent. In response to his question, Guy heard a deep chuckle. You forget what I used to be, might Guy. I was a silent in of Karigakur. Ing you when I can't even see you happens to be a specialty of mine. Li rolled out of the way just as Haku hit the ground again. The frozen bridge now worked to Li's advantage as he easily slid far enough away from Haku to get back into a ready stance. Impressive, you think fast on your feet. You are also able to dodge attacks coming from multiple directions at once, no doubt experience you have received from training with Naruto-san. As Haku spoke the mist grew heavier. Soon Li was unable to see his opponent. Unfortunately for you, I trained with Zabuza-san, fighting in this mist is little of a disadvantage for me. It won't make a difference if we are far enough away from the source. Li jumped backwards and began running away from where he Yumed Zabuza was. As he ran he heard just the barest sound of whizzing through the air. Li ducked just as a set of Sinban flew over his head. He heard it again and Li turned his head to the side to avoid another set. The farther he went the more the mist seemed to clear. His idea was working. Suddenly his progress was halted. Li looked down to see his feet trapped in solid ice. He couldn't get out. No escape this time. Haku appeared in front of Li, his Sinban poised to strike. Your innation attempt won't work on me, Momochi Zabuza. I am a Jonin of Konoha. If you get close enough to me, I'll sense you in an instant. Guy walked around aimlessly as he spoke. Waiting for Zabuza to make his move. Guy would be ready. You may have a point there. Too bad there is another man here who doesn't have the same S as you. Guy paled when he heard Zabuza's threat. Oh no. Guy began running for where he knew Tazuna was. He had to make it. There was no way he couldn't. Guy was just barely able to make out Tazuna's form now. Then he saw it. A giant blade cutting through the mist. He wasn't going to get there in time. Tazuna San, move. Guy only hoped he would react in time. Kaden. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Zabaza's sword bounced harmlessly off of Hinata's spinning shield. Haku struck true, but he hit Naruto instead of Lee. Who's got who? Naruto laughed as blood fell from his mouth. He grabbed onto Haku's arm as a clone ran up from the right. Haku wasn't able to pull away and the new Naruto nailed him right in the face. Haku went rolling away. The Naruto with Sinban in him bent over, coughed up more blood and popped while the other Naruto disappeared into the mist after Haku. It's good to see you alive and well bushy brow. Lee whirled around to see the real Naruto crouched at his feet, stabbing at the ice with a kanai. In just a couple seconds Lee was free and able to move again. Naruto, you saved me. I thought for a split second that the one that took the blow was you. Lee nodded gratefully to Naruto who stood up, now that his task was complete. Yeah, that trick is pretty handy. Naruto laughed. We can catch up later, right? I got two clones left fighting that guy, we have to help them. Lee nodded happily. That won't be necessary. Haku's voice rang out from all around. Crap. Naruto and Lee quickly moved so they were back to back with each other. I can't believe he beat them so fast. One second they were there and the next they just died. How did he do it? Simple, don't you see? You are already trapped inside my jutsu. The mist around them cleared enough that Naruto and Lee could see they were completely surrounded by mirrors. There was a haku in each one. What the? Zabuza nearly lost his grip on his sword as it bounced backwards. The spinning shield that had deflected his blade disappeared to reveal Hinata slowly stopping her spin. You. 
You think that pathetic jutsu will be enough to stop me? Zabuza brought his sword back up. Konoha Senpu. Guy landed a powerful kick into Zabuza's stomach. Zabuza was launched backwards into the mist, where he disappeared from sight. Guy landed in front of his student. Hanada, nice work. I trust there were no problems. Guy looked back at his student. Tazuna san's house was attacked by a couple of samurai before we were able to leave. We think they were Gatu's thugs. Hanada said, looking ready to spin if Zabuza showed himself. What? Is my family okay? Tazuna interrupted. Hanada nodded. They are fine. The samurai were trying to kidnap your daughter but Inari stood up to them. He gave me and Naruto-kun the perfect distraction to sneak up on them and take them out. After we got them we hurried here as fast as we could. Thank goodness it appears we weren't too late. Where is Naruto? I don't see him around. Guy glanced around briefly for his other student. He's here, but he stopped to aid Lee Senpei. Hanada answered quickly. Excellent. Your fires are burning brightly. Guy gave Hanada the thumbs up before he turned serious again. Listen, Hanada. Don't leave Tazuna's side no matter what. I will fight Zabuza in the mist alone. Can I count on you to make sure Tazuna is safe? Yes sensei, I won't fail you. Hanada stood firm. Good, be careful. With that, Guy charged into the mist. Alright, Zabuza, it's time we settle this. Fine by me, I'm going to make you regret those words. Zabuza shouted from within the mist. What the is this? Naruto shouted. He and Lee were still back to back. You didn't mention that you were capable of making this many mirrors. Not to mention that you can make one of you in each mirror. Of course not. A true shinobi never reveals his secrets while not in a battle. The results could be fatal. All the reflections moved as one as they reached into his back pouch. Are they clones? Lee eyed each one extremely carefully in an attempt to decipher even a minor difference. No, they're not clones. Haku answered now. They are merely reflections. Now then, it's time I show you what real speed is. Each Haku lifted a single Sanban. In an instant, dozens of needles littered the floor. Naruto and Lee now had scratch marks everywhere. It happened so fast it took both of them an instant to realize what had happened. When they did, they both fell to the ground in agony. What the? Naruto gasped. That attack came from everywhere at once. Those must be clones. No, that was an extreme speed. I should have taken my leg weights off. Lee started to reach for them but a Sinban pierced his hand. Lee drew it back quickly. There will be no need for that. Haku said. I'd prefer you guys just lay quietly and give it up. Like. Cage bunch and no jutsu. Three more Naruto's popped up. Okay bushy brow, if we can't keep up in here then we just gotta bust out. Let's make a run for it. Right. Let us go. Lee got up and started running. Naruto and his clones did the same, each of them went in a completely separate direction. It's pointless. Haku vanished from the mirrors for a second. In that second Lee, Naruto and his clones were all thrown backwards. They had hardly gone more than a few feet. You have trained quite hard these past two weeks in order to make sure your clones wouldn't pop upon receiving damage. I'm sorry to tell you that all the training was completely pointless, Naruro-san. Gota, Haku. Naruto picked up a needle that was laying on the ground. For being so fast, your aim really s. Not a single one of these has nailed us directly. Is that so? Haku asked. In the next instant, Naruto had three Sinban in himself and each of his clones. Each one slowly fell over and popped. It. Naruto slowly stood back up. Cage bunch and no jutsu. Three more clones popped up. Again, bushy brow. Naruto and his clones started running. Right. Lee also began running for an exit. You are trying my patience. Haku flew for Lee first. When he was knocked back he went for the Naruto's. He nailed the first one in the throat, forcing it to pop. Haku landed in a mirror and immediately jumped for the next one. He stabbed it and it also popped. Haku turned to get the next one but one of his own Sinban flew right in front of his face. Haku backtracked quickly into a mirror before jumping back out and quickly knocking back the other two Naruto's. It, I almost had him. One Naruto groaned as he got up, both of them picked up another Sinban. Lee looked at him in surprise. You can see him move. Not exactly. I'll explain later. Can you keep going bushy brow? Each Naruto appeared to make another clone. Of course. Lee pulled a couple Sinban out of himself as well. He then stood up. All of them took off in a separate direction again. 
Hapku decided to go for Naruto first this time. He took care of another clone. Suddenly, he felt a Sinban pierce his shoulder. Hapku was so surprised he stopped moving. Lee noticed right away and changed his direction. He jumped and spun in the air towards his opponent. Hapku blocked his spinning kick but Lee's follow-up punch nailed him square in the stomach. Hapku flew into a mirror, but instead of smashing into it, he sunk inside. Hey, I got him the time. Naruto smiled proudly to himself. That shouldn't be possible. Hapku muttered in disbelief. No one can see my movements. I have to end this fast. Hapku launched himself at Naruto before he had a chance to replace his fallen clone. When he popped this one, another Sinban flew at him. Hapku barely ducked this time and then flew back into his mirror. Now I get it. You can't see me at all can you? Figured it out already. Naruto chuckled. That's right. Learning to maintain my clones wasn't the only thing I learned while training. When you pop my clones I know right where you are. I just have to throw one of the needles you leave me when their knowledge comes into my head. So far, I'd say it's working pretty good. Most impressive Naruto. Lee pumped his fist into the air. With this strategy, escape probably wasn't even necessary. They just had to run around and force Haku to attack them. Taking off his weights wouldn't be needed either. Shadow clones take an incredible amount of chakra. How long can you keep this up? Hakus appeared in all of the mirrors again. Way longer than you'll be able to keep up this crappy jutsu of yours. Naruto bragged. I have the most chakra of any genin in the leaf. There's no way I'll run out against someone like you. This is most unfortunate. I had been avoiding your vital points. I had come to enjoy your company over these past couple weeks, but it would appear I no longer have any choice but to kill you. Haku launched himself at Naruto. He pierced him in the heart. He disappeared in a poof of smoke. Now just you left. Haku threw another set of Sinban at Naruto and Lee. Naruto having received information from his clone was able to roll out of the way. Lee wasn't so lucky but he did manage to avoid getting hit in his vitals. It, I think he's serious. Naruto formed the ram seal once again. Bushy brow, you going to be able to go another time. Naruto looked with worry over at his teammate. Why yeah, no problem, Naruto. Lee staggered to his feet. He didn't even bother to pull any needles out. He didn't want to admit it, but he was still sore from being thrashed by Zabuza a week ago too. Now he was covered in needles. Anyone would be exhausted, yet he couldn't afford to let his teammate down. Cage bunch and no jutsu. Again, three more Naruto's appeared. Why do you try so hard? Can't you see that it is impossible to win in here? My jutsu has never fallen before. Haku was frustrated now. Now Naruto was dodging his Sinban. Proof that this was taking far too long. He was running out of chakra. Haku was going to have to get underhanded to end this. It's because we can't die yet. We're finally together again. There's no way I'd let something as stupid as dying split us back up. Naruto and his clones took a running stance. Lee smiled happily at his best friend. Let's take this guy out, Naruto. You got it bushy brow. Let's go. The Naruto's took off. Lee started to but a Sinban hit him in the calf, causing him to stumble and fall. Haku flew at Lee now. Naruto stopped and turned. Time seemed to slow down. Haku was flying at Lee, one Sinban ready to strike him down. Naruto whipped a kunai out of his pouch and began to run towards Lee as well. Haku was too close. He was going to strike. Putting on a final burst of speed Naruto got in front of him and swung his kunai. It impaled Haku in the stomach. Lee looked up to see Naruto standing in front of him, a Sinban run through the side of his neck. Haku was bleeding hard from the stomach and he appeared to be coughing up blood. Naruto. Your clone got him. Lee rose slowly to his feet. Not yet. Naruto roared and pulled the kunai out. He went to strike again but Haku pushed him back and jumped towards his mirrors, throwing more Sanban as he did. They all connected with Naruto. As this happened, three Naruto's disappeared. The one who had taken the hits remained. Guy ducked under another swing Zabuza made. He turned around to deliver a powerful kick, but as always, Zabuza was gone. They had been going back and forth like this for minutes now. Zabuza would appear swinging, Guy would block or dodge and return fire, only for Zabuza to have already vanished back into the mist. This kind of battle doesn't much suit my flames of youth, why don't you say we make this a little more head-on? Guy jumped over a low swing from the sword. 
When he landed, Zabuza wasn't anywhere to be seen. Then he heard the whizzing of the blade from behind him. Guy realized with fear that he couldn't dodge all the way this time. So he jumped backwards. The back of the blade by the handle cut deep into his hip. Guy was able to deliver a powerful elbow into Zabuza's ribcage in exchange though. Zabuza disappeared back into the mist. That sounds fun, but no thanks. Any minute now and Haku will have your two students down and he'll come to east me. Not even you can take us both at once. Guy wasn't able to pinpoint Zabuza's voice. That is a most unyouthful strategy. I would have expected more pride out of you. Guy took two small steps backwards. His hands were ready for anything. Besides, how can you be so sure your pupil will win? He is outnumbered himself. Haku could never lose. He for sure has them trapped in his jutsu by now. Once that happens it is only a matter of time. I guarantee it. Zabuza appeared right in front of Guy, thrusting his sword forward. Guy stepped to the side and punched Zabuza through the face. He turned into water. I got you know. Zabuza was in the air above Guy. He swung his sword down. This time instead of dodging, Guy spun around and slapped his hands on either side of the blade. He managed to halt its progress inches before it split his face. Zabuza's feet hit the ground. He tried to pull his sword back but he couldn't move it. Guy smirked. Wrong, I've got you now. Lee couldn't move. He couldn't speak. This one was a clone too, right? He had to be. Naruto must have made an extra and snuck out already. Naruto slowly turned his head to look at Lee. Sorry to say bushy brow, but I'm the real one. He must have known what he was thinking. Naruto's voice broke Lee from his shock. No. Why are you the real one? Why did you jump in front of him? I had to, it had to be me, no clone of mine would have survived through this. It was the best way to save you. Naruto wobbled a little now. But why did you have to save me? You were the one who was actually keeping up with him. You should have saved yourself. Tears were beginning to well up in Lee's eyes. I promised Tenten. Naruto whispered. Lee's eyes grew big. I swore to her that I'd keep you safe. Naruto fell backwards. Lee stumbled down and barely caught him. Lee sat on his knees, supporting Naruto with his arms. Besides, what kind of Hokage would I be if I let my friends die? It was bad enough when I watched you get captured. You can't be Hokage at all if you die. Tears fell freely from Lee's face now. What was all the talk about nothing separating us? Were those just empty words? Naruto smiled slightly up at him. It's funny. He completely ignored Lee's questions. I didn't think anyone would cry for me when I died. Naruto's voice almost sounded relieved. The whole village, they hated me you know. Even our generation. They all looked at me like I was going to destroy them. I didn't know what I'd done to deserve it until just before I became a genin. I want you to know too. This was it. The secret Lee had wanted to hear since he'd met Naruto. Lee had spent hours in the library. Days, asking people to just try and get one more hint. Now he was about to get it. But he didn't want to know now, not like this. No, Naruto. Lee choked out. Conserve your strength. If you stop speaking you might still be able to live. Naruto ignored him. It was because of the Kyubi no Yoko. It was sealed inside me as a baby. Lee's tears hit full force now. It all finally made sense, he had all the clues but he hadn't even been able to put it together. Now it was almost too late. Naruto, please, stop. Lee begged. It does not matter, I accept you regardless, Hinata and Gai Sensei still do as well. We do not care if you have a demon inside you, just live. Naruto felt tears start to s out of his own eyes as well now. His voice came out hoarse. Meeting you guys was the best thing that ever happened to me. I would rather die and never become Hokage than lose one of you. Thank you, Lee, for being my friend. Naruto closed his eyes and went limp right in the boy's arms. Naruto. Lee put his face up to Naruto's chest. He didn't have a pulse. This is the first time you actually used my name. Why did it have to be the last thing you ever said to me? Lee's voice was muffled by Naruto's jacket. Naruto. Lee screamed to the sky. Naruto lived a hard life. To have no one is to have no purpose. Meeting you, gave him purpose. Naruto and I were very much alike. He was just as much prepared to become a real shinobi as I to do that, you must accept death. Haku slid himself back into his mirror, regret was heavy in his voice. Be quiet, Lee whispered. He gently lay Naruto down. 
Li then sat cross-legged next to him and began pulling Sinban out of his body. Blood spurted with each one but Li kept going. Soon, Naruto's body was free of them. Li closed Naruto's eyes and then began to pull the Sinban out of himself. Naruto. Li grit his teeth as he pulled one out. Haku just watched him silently, he owed him at least that. You were my best friend. I am hurting so badly right now that I can not even describe it. Li finished pulling off the Sinban and then removed his leg weights. Haku still made no move to stop him. The only thing that I can possibly think of to ease the pain is by avenging you. I will do whatever it takes, even if it destroys my own body. Li slowly stood up, a pair of weights in each hand. Here I come. He then threw one of them at one of Haku's mirrors. It will take more than just a couple pounds to destroy my mirror. Haku was cut off as the weights shattered the mirror he was in completely. The shattering caused all of the reflections to disappear, leaving only one Haku in a mirror. Li looked at it immediately and whipped his second weight. Haku barely managed to dive out in time. He fell out of it upside down. Nevertheless, he turned to throw his Sinban at Li but he was gone. Haku didn't even have time to wonder where he went as the elbow buried itself in his stomach. Konoha Kaigansho. Li shouted as Haku went flying backwards into the mist. Li landed as Haku's ice mirrors shattered all around him. Haku's back connected painfully with the concrete, successfully knocking the breath from his body. Haku slowly stood up. Li charged straight at him. Haku raised his arm and blocked a punch. He then jumped over Li's sweeping kick. Li vanished and Haku felt Li's fist connect with his shoulder. Haku spun twice from the force of the blow. Li wasn't in sight again. Haku heard him though. He bent low just as Li's kick flew over. What incredible speed. Haku blocked Li's follow-up kick. He skid back several feet from the force. And power. Haku moved his head sideways to dodge Li's next punch. But I cannot afford to lose here. Haku was now within Li's guard. He threw his own punch. Before it could connect with Li's stomach he disappeared. Let go of my sword. Zabuza gritted his teeth and pushed down harder. Guy held his ground firmly. He wasn't even giving an inch. Blood spurt out of his open wound. You release your hold on it. Guy retorted through clenched teeth. It was taking all his power to accomplish this task and ignore the pain. At the very least, he had Zabuza in sight now. Guy pushed upwards a little. Zabuza wouldn't budge either. Suddenly, a figure flew right under and between them. He rolled painfully ped them before stumbled up to his feet. Haku. Zabuza looked over in surprise. Guy took the opportunity and began to push the blade up. Then Lee flew over them and pressed on his with his attack. Lee. Guy was completely shocked now. He had never seen such a look of pure rage on Lee's face. He then realized that he could see farther into the mist than normally. Zabuza was lifting the mist. His surprise was greater than Guy had expected. Guy could now see Tazuna and Hanada as well. Hanada watched in horror as Lee beat on the boy she had come to know over the past two weeks. Lee Senpei. Stop. Hanada took a couple steps away from Tazuna. Haku-san isn't a bad person. There's no need to go so far. Lee actually halted his attack to look at Hanada. Haku leaned painfully against the railing and rubbed his bruised cheek. Despite the apparent aggressive alt Lee was giving, hardly any of his blows were more than glancing. He was too worked up to fight properly. A fact Haku was using to stay alive at the moment. He is not a bad person. Lee asked in disbelief. Hanada could do nothing more than look at him in confusion. He is the worst kind of person. Lee shouted, pointing a dramatic finger at Haku. He, he Naruto. I can never forgive him for that. Lee balled his hands into fists. It's time. Lee then widened his stance and stuck his arms in an X in front of himself. The world stopped for Guy and Hanada. Their thoughts ran exactly the same. Naruto was dead. Impossible. Lee had just been caught in the heat of battle and had misjudged. There was no way he was dead. First gate. Lee called breaking them both from their reserve. Guy finally had the peace of mind to say something. He let go of Zabuza's sword and dodged out of the way as it came crashing onto the ground. Zabuza stumbled forward from the unexpected shift. Lee, wait. He took only a couple running steps. Open. It was too late. Lee vanished for a second and then he and Haku tumbled off the side of the bridge. Guy stopped running. There was no point following him. He had Zabuza still to fight. Well, well. Seems like Haku did pretty good. Too bad for that kid of yours. Zabuza chuckled to himself as he swung at Guy again. 
Guy held up his hand and this time stopped the blade with one hand. What? Guy's back was still turned to Zabuza. You'll pay for that comment. Guy said darkly. He spun around and nailed Zabuza in the side of the head with a strong kick. Zabuza stuck his blade into the ground to keep himself from skidding. Zabuza regretted the decision. He was still close enough to see Guy's face clearly. The look of pure rage was something more akin to a devil than Zabuza had ever seen. Guy reached into his back pouch causing Zabuza tensed up. Guy pulled out Nunchaku and the demon ninja let out a sigh of relief. You plan to beat my big sword with that small thing. Zabuza had to suppress a laugh. Guy didn't even respond this time. Instead he swung his weapon around. Suit yourself. Zabuza hefted his mighty blade and charged. Scary looking or not, he was going to split him in half. As he came to Guy he swung down. Guy swung his weapon to meet Zabuza's sword. The result was Zabuza's sword being knocked completely backwards. What the, Zabuza's speech was cut as Guy slammed the two poles together and then thrust them into Zabuza's face. Gah. Zabuza held his face with one hand. The other still held onto the sword. You'll pay for that. Guy vanished. Apparently you didn't hear me. Zabuza's eyes grew wide. The voice was right behind his ear. It is you who will pay. Zabuza had no chance to move as his ribcage lit up in burning pain. He spun around swinging his blade. Guy knocked it back with his nunchaku again. Another swing around and one of the wood poles slapped Zabuza in the side of the face. The force sent Zabuza to the ground. Zabuza slowly started to stand up. Is that the best you can do? Guy's foot connected with Zabuza's stomach, lifting him completely from where he lay and into the air. Guy swung his weapon around again. Zabuza barely blocked with his blade. The force sent the still airborne Zabuza flying back a few feet. He landed and skid on the ground. Guy took a step towards him. Zabuza's eyes grew wide with fear. Stay away. He reached into his pocket and pulled out four shuriken. He whipped them all. Three of them nailed Guy in the torso. One nicked him in the cheek. It started to bleed freely. Guy wiped the blood off of it and looked down at it. You disappoint me. I thought the bloody demon of the mist would pose a bigger threat than this. Zabuza felt his fear increasing. The man had lost it. He took the blow of those shuriken without even blinking. Guy vanished and reappeared in front of Zabuza. His nunchaku were already coming around. Zabuza blocked with the handle of his sword. He then pulled out a kanai and stabbed at Guy. Guy stepped back but it was too late. Zabuza struck right in between the ribs. Guy coughed up blood. I'm not done yet. He swung his nunchaku again. Zabuza again blocked with his blade. He then pulled his kanai out before taking another stab. Guy jumped back and successfully dodged this time. So the cornered demon gets desperate. A good strategy though. Blocking with that big sword of yours and then slicing at me with your speedy, small kanai. It worked the first time but it won't help you anymore. Guy began his alt again. Hanada was blind to everything that was happening in front of her. The second Lee fell off the bridge, his words resounded in her head. She needed to see it for herself. Tazuna put his hand on her shoulder. Hey, take me to him. I want to see him too. Tazuna's voice was solemn. Hanada nodded her thanks, grabbed Tazuna's hand and led them past the two fighting ninja. It didn't take long to make out Naruto's body in the clearing mist. Hanada gasped at the sight she saw. His body was covered with little bloody holes. Dozens of Sinban and shards of ice lay all around him. Tazuna doubted he would have even needed his glees to confirm the boy wasn't breathing. Hanada knelt down to check anyways. He had no pulse, as she already knew. Hanada bit back her tears. You don't need to hold them in for me. Tazuna began wiping away his own tears. It, look at him. Smiling even in death. What Tazuna said was true. Naruto's mouth was curved upwards, even from the way he lay. Hanada stared down at Naruto. So many things were running through her mind. Finally, words started to come to her. I loved him, you know. Tazuna stared at her silently. I've loved him for a long time, I think. I only just realized it recently though. It had started out as admiration. I wonder when it turned into something more. Hanada smiled bitterly at how pathetic she was. This was the first time she had ever confessed aloud and he wasn't even alive to hear it. I was so happy when we were placed on the same team, I thought I could have died right then. It was a good thing I didn't. I had so many new experiences with him. Tears finally started to fall from her eyes. They hit Naruto in the cheek. 
Sometimes he was a real idiot. But I fell even more in love with him because of it. Tazuna's tears picked up as Hanada kept talking. She slowly began rubbing his cheek. Just recently, we made a vow to each other. I was going to become the heir to my clan. He was going to become Hokage. We were both going to get the respect we wanted. Hanada wiped away her tears. She shuddered for a second. It, Naruto. Hanada shouted. Tazuna looked at her in surprise. Who is supposed to become Hokage now? Hanada screamed as she banged a fist on his chest. Who am I supposed to draw my confidence from now? She hit him again. Who am I supposed to accomplish my dream with now? She hit him once more. Her last question came as little more than a whisper. Who am I supposed to love now? No fist followed. Instead, Hanada broke completely down into tears. Haku and Lee both landed on the water at approximately the same time. There was no mist down here at all. Instead, the clear blue sky and bright rays of the sun shined down on them. Something completely unfit for the battle that was taking place. Neither shinobi paid any attention to the nice weather though. They were squaring off. Lee sent a flying kick at Haku. A wall of ice rose and Lee nailed that instead, leaving a huge crack. Lee disappeared and reappeared behind Haku. This time a hand of ice swow from the water and grabbed Lee's forearm, stopping his punch completely. You made a big mistake bringing me down here. Haku turned to face Lee. This whole battlefield is now my weapon. There is no way you can beat me when we fight on top of the water. Haku rose his arms. In response, four spikes of ice swow out of the water at Lee. Thinking fast, Lee kicked the ice arm, freeing his hand. Lee then did a back F, avoiding the spikes. I cannot afford to lose here. I still have time left with the first gate. Lee charged again. Haku raised another wall of ice. Lee easily shattered it with his knee. He then released a chamber kick at Haku. Haku formed the water around his arm and made an ice gauntlet. He blocked the kick with that gauntlet. Lee landed on the ground and the water crawled up his feet and froze. Lee was stuck again like he was up on the bridge. I'm sorry, but this is it for you. Haku made a series of hand signs. The water around Lee began to spin and rise up. Not long and it was all the way up to his neck. It will take more than this to bring me down. Lee flailed his arms as best he could but it proved pointless. As the spinning water rose over his head it solidified. Lee was now trapped inside a prison of ice. He couldn't move at all. It must be a painful way to die. Haku sympathized. Not being able to move, not able to breathe. The only thing you can do is wait to die. I'm sorry that you were unable to avenge your friend. Haku turned around and started to walk towards the support beams on the bridge. A burst of chakra made him stop. Haku turned around in surprise. What he saw was an even greater surprise. Lee was glowing and the ice began cracking. Impossible. Haku murmured as the ice shattered completely with a loud bang. Second gate. Open. Lee said triumphantly. He touched the water and vanished. His fist connected with Haku's cheek, knocking him back. Haku landed on the water painfully. To have enough power to shatter the ice with pure chakra, incredible. Lee didn't give Haku any longer to admire his new strength as he charged at him again. Haku rose another wall of water in defense. Before it even turned to ice Lee burst through it. Haku brought up his gauntlet to defend. Lee's fist shattered it too. Ice spikes fired from behind Haku. Lee jumped backwards to dodge them. Wasting no time, Haku raised his hands. A giant wave of water formed all around him. Meanwhile, spikes of ice swow continued to shoot at Lee. The water began to bend inwards. Soon, Haku had himself encased in a giant dome of water. The water turned to ice and Haku sat down and breathed a sigh of relief. You cannot hide from me. Lee shouted. He flew at the dome and nailed it with his most powerful kick. The ice didn't even crack. Lee jumped back and did it again. He then followed the second kick with a punch. The ice still didn't give way. You won't be able to break this ice. It is much thicker than my mirrors. Also, once this dome is complete it takes no chakra to maintain. While your gates and chakra exhaust out there I will be recovering my chakra in here. Haku sat cross-legged in the center of his dome. He had spoken more to himself. There was no way Lee could hear him from in here. Soon, Lee's blows stopped. Haku smiled and stood up. It was time to end this. Then it happened. The top of Haku's dome shattered. Lee fell through and landed in a crouch right in front of him. That shouldn't be possible. Haku slid backwards on the spiri dome floor. 
How did Li know that the weakest point of his dome was the top where the water had merged? Anything is possible if you set your mind to it. Li jumped at Haku, his fist extended. A spike of ice swam from the floor, blocking Li's fist. Li slid backwards as three more spikes swam upright where he had been standing. Li then slid himself forward. He jumped over another spike that appeared. Stop this. The dome is made of ice. Surely you see the hopelessness of this struggle. Haku yelled as he ducked under Li's kick. Haku slid to the center of the dome. He rose his arms and spikes fired from all around at Li. I told you, anything is possible. Li vanished and all the ice shattered uselessly against itself. Haku looked downwards just in time to see Li's foot fly up at him. In connected with his chin and launched him outside of the ice dome. Just as Haku's flight skyward stopped, Li appeared behind him. The bandages on his arms wrapped themselves around Haku. They pulled tight, Haku could no longer move. Li grabbed onto him and as they fell Li began spinning quickly. Haku realized with fear that Li intended to slam him into the dome he'd created to defend himself. Haku closed his eyes and focused hard. The ice began to melt. Willing it to melt faster, Haku was barely able to make it all vanish before he and Li nailed the water. However, without the ice there, Haku and Li drilled deep down into the water. Haku's ears popped from the pressure of going so far down. Soon their descent slowed. The now wet bandages snapped easily with a slight tug from Haku, he kicked off of Li and began swimming towards the surface. Third gate. Open. Haku felt another boom of chakra. He turned around in disbelief. Li started kicking with all his might. He flew at Haku like a rocket. Haku didn't have a chance to move out of the way as Li nailed him in the shoulder. Haku swung around in the water. Right when he stopped spinning, he felt Li nail him again in the back as he swam by again. Haku couldn't even tell if Li was punching him or just plain ramming him anymore. Even scarier, Haku realized he had lost his bearings. With all the spinning, Haku didn't even know what way was up. Suddenly, Li nailed him again. Haku watched the way the bubbles went that Li created. Haku knew which way to go now. He formed a quick set of seals. A pillar of ice formed beneath his feet and started shooting upwards. Haku looked out of the corner of his eye. He saw Li flying upwards towards him. This was going to be close. Haku barely broke the water before Li did. He channeled all the chakra into his feet and jumped. Combined with the pressure of breaking out of the water and Haku went higher than he had expected. He looked down to see the bridge was well below him. Haku's relief turned into pure terror as he felt Li grab onto both of his ankles. It is over. Li roared. He began doing a series of front F, taking Haku along for the ride. When he released his hold, Haku was flung towards the bridge at an alarming speed. Zabuza had been one of the best swordsmen in his village. Even among the seven that he was a group of he was considered one of the best. It was rare in his life that he met someone who outclead him in S with a weapon. For this crazy green beast to be someone who was better than him was a great insult to Zabuza. It. I'm going to tear you to shreds. Zabuza roared. He charged and stabbed at Guy with his kanai again. Guy ducked under the kanai, stepped forward and swung his nunchaku upwards. The pole connected with Zabuza's chin. You won't be tearing anyone else to shreds ever again. Guy swung his nunchaku around and nailed Zabuza painfully in the back of the knee. Zabuza dropped down to his knees just as a crash appeared further down the bridge. Both shinobi looked to see Haku laying on the ground. The boy started to stumble up but collapsed. Li soon fell down onto the bridge too. He landed but then he too stumbled. The gate's effects had worn off. Seems like this is it, Momochi Zabuza, for you and your pupil. Guy swung his nunchaku back into his pouch. For ending my student's youth, I plan to take yours. Guy ed back his fist in preparation. Zabuza could only look at it in fear. This fist would definitely not be one he could survive. Haku's vision blurred back just in time for him to see Guy bring his fist back. Haku again attempted to stand up. It. Haku cursed. His arms were broken. He had used them to shield himself from the impact onto the bridge. He was alive but the price had been heavy. Haku barely managed to get to his feet. He could make it. As long as his feet worked he would be just fast enough to intercept that punch. Jukin. Haku's vision blurred completely again. He coughed up blood and then fell to his knees. Zabuza san, run. Haku fell to the floor, unconscious. Hanada stood behind him. Her open palm was still extended outwards. 
her Byakugan still active. I believed in you, Haku-san. I really did. Her face was still stained with tears. A sudden movement in the mist caught the attention of her eyes. Gai-sensei, behind you. Gai spun around at Hinata's warning. A man with a spear appeared out of what mist was left and charged at him. Guy grabbed it as the man thrust it at him. A sneak attack. Most unyouthful. Guy snapped the spear and then grabbed the man by the throat and slammed him into the ground. Zabuza smiled. He didn't know who the man was or where he had come from but he gave him just the opportunity he needed. Zabuza stood up and hefted his sword. He was going to hack Guy in two. Don't even think about it. Guy swow his foot backwards. It connected with Zabuza's stomach. Zabuza coughed up blood and dropped his sword and kunai. Guy turned back to face him. Well, well. Would you look at this here? Poor little Zabuza's all beat up. Zabuza and Guy turned to see who was here now. Soon the mist cleared all the way to reveal the newcomers. Neither. Jonan liked what they saw. Gaitu stood there and behind him was an army of thugs. Gaitu. Zabuza growled. What the is this? What are you doing here? He slowly stood up to face his employer. Well you see, Zabuza, I've changed my mind again. I can't afford to triple your salary. I like the idea of having you butchered more. An evil grin appeared across Gaitu's face. What? Zabuza's eyes got wide with disbelief. Yep, you're too wild lately. Too indirect. Who the kidnaps a kid so they can kill a different man two weeks later? Now that you and that other guy who had you shaken in your boots are all beat up, these guys will clean house. It's simple, cheap. Gaitu laughed maliciously. Zabuza stared down at the MIB group in front of him. I thought I already told you. No matter how injured, those men don't have the ability to kill a Jonan, let alone two. I don't like how you're insinuating that we should team up, but I don't see many other options at the moment. Guy stepped forward, cracking his knuckles. I'll settle my score with you later. Guess that means we're in an agreement. Zabuza readied his sword. I will join you. Lee stumbled up next to his sensei. Zabuza and Guy both looked surprised to see him standing there. No, Lee. You've done enough. Opening the gates has tore your muscles, you must rest for a while. Guy caught Lee as he stumbled forward. I have to get him. He is the reason this all happened. He is the reason Naruto is dead. Lee looked fiercely at Gaitu. He deeply regretted not defeat him when he had the chance. I owe you one for what you did to my arm you brat. Gaitu pointed his cane accusingly at Lee. I'm going to enjoy kicking your corpse when this is over. Over my dead body. Guy and Lee both turned surprised faces towards Zabuza. Even he seemed surprised by the words that left his mouth. The group was so surprised, no one noticed Hanada charge past until it was too late. Guy didn't have a chance to grab her. He was still holding onto Lee too. What the? Gaitu immediately turned and ran into the safety of his group. I've had enough, kill the and then the rest of them. Hanada, wait. Don't do this, there are too many of them. Guy watched in horror as she didn't listen. It's not that she wasn't listening though. It was that she didn't hear him. Lee's words of how this man was the cause of Naruto's death rang true through her ears. She was going to pay him back in full. No matter how many thugs were in the way. Alright, I get dibs on the girl. One man stepped forward with a sword in hand. Before he could even react he had a full Jukan strike through his heart. What the, the man coughed up blood and fell backwards. The rest of them paused and stared in shock at what happened. Hanada didn't stop though. She sprinted into the heart of the group. The men quickly got over their shock and started swinging whatever they could at her. She dodged and weaved through every strike, throwing in her own here and there. Soon though she was completely surrounded and they all swung down at once. Kaden. All the thugs in the immediate vicinity were blasted backwards. Most of them fell on top of others, leaving more than half of them sprawled out on the ground, some of the men were impaled on weapons that they fell on. More than enough were down to give Hanada a clear gap to her target. Gaitu reached the edge of the bridge and turned around. To his horror, all his guards were knocked down and the girl was coming straight for him. Wait, please stop. I'll give you anything you want. Money, power, men, you name it. Gaitu held up his arms in front of his face. Then give me back Naruto-kun. Hanada struck Gaitu in his broken arm. Gaitu howled in pain. Can you do that? Hanada's next strike hit his shoulder. Is it within your abilities to bring him back to me? Hanada sent a Jukan into his gut. Please. Gaitu begged as he doubled over. He had never felt pain like this in his life. 
His plea fell on deaf ears as Hanada's arms became encased in blue chakra for a split second. Juaho Soshikan. She nailed Gehu right in the side of the head, defeat him and sending him off the ledge. Hanada stood there, panting. She'd done it. She'd got to him. You, you'll pay for that. A couple of the thugs were running up behind her. Their weapons raised to strike. It didn't matter anymore though. Not to Hanada. She'd avenged Naruto. She was satisfied. Hanada, no, run. Guy called. Time was in slow motion for him. He watched as the thugs raised their weapons. He let God of Lee and started to run. He watched Hanada stand straight. He watched the weapons fall. Guy had no time to do anything. Even he wasn't that fast. He'd failed not one, but two students. Hanada closed her eyes and waited for the blows to come. They never did. Instead she heard a loud clang as all their weapons were deflected. She spun around in surprise to see Zabuza standing there. His sword had saved her life. Surprised to see me, girl. Zabuza swung his sword and split the group in front of him in half. If you want to die, then die fighting. Don't die with your back turned to the enemy. How would that blonde brat have felt if you died sympathetically? Hanada's eyes grew wide. Zabuza was right, she realized. She had been ready to throw her life away. But that wasn't right. That wasn't how Naruto would have wanted it. Newfound determination settled into her eyes. Let's go. Hanada's Byakugan activated and she slid into her stance. That's more like it, Zabuza said. He turned to face the thugs and charged forward without waiting for Hanada. One swing of his sword and three of them lost their heads. You bad guy. Another man shouted as he ran at Zabuza from the side with a spear in hand. He didn't get far as Hanada sent a Jukin into the side of his face. Nice one, girl. Zabuza nodded his approval before turning back to the gang of men. To his surprise some were looking the other way. What's going on? Gai Sensei and Lee Senpei are fighting from the other end. Hanada answered for him. Alright, then let's meet them halfway. Hanada nodded and they both charged together. They covered each other's weakness as well. Zabuza would take out many of them at a distance thanks to his mid blade. If one or two men got in too close, Hanada would easily dispatch them. Soon, they met up with Guy and Lee at the center. All four shinobi quickly went back to back. The gang of men had been completely thinned out by now. There was only enough of them left to form a small circle around the shinobi. Yet Lee had his doubts that they could actually handle what was left. His body felt like it was on fire and his vision was beginning to blur. Lee Senpei. I'm glad you're all right. Hanada managed to say. Yeah, same to you. Lee looked at his female teammate. His only teammate. I'm sorry. Hanada shook her head. Don't be, I can't blame you. Hanada felt tears edge at her eyes again just from thinking about Naruto. Stay focused. Zabuza snapped. Even he felt like he could topple over at any moment. We're going to make you guys pay for defeat our meal ticket and half our men. A big man with a huge mace said as he edged forward slightly. Yeah, after we mount your heads on some poles, we're gonna have our way with the nearby town. Another man shouted. Right boys. The rest gave a small cheer. A second later and the one who had just talked got hit in the back of the head by a small arrow. He toppled over dead. What the? All the thugs turned to see what had happened. Now. Guy shouted. All four shinobi sprung forward and took care of the bandits while their attention was diverted. What was that? Lee asked as he struck down the last one. It was Inari-san and Tsunami-san. Zabuza and Lee both gave Hanada a strange look. Then she remembered that neither of them had met the two before. Tazuna-san's daughter and grandson. Hanada clarified. Oh, I see. Lee looked across the bridge and saw all three of them. They were all leaned over Naruto's corpse. Naruto slowly stood up from where he had been laying. Where the am I? He groaned while looking around. It looked like a sewer of some sort. There were pipes everywhere, not to mention how dark and dank it was. Am I even alive? Naruto wondered out loud to himself. Oh no. What if this is? Naruto started to panic. Then he heard it. At first Naruto thought it might be wind. But it was different. It sounded more like breathing. But what could be so big that Naruto could hear it like that? Naruto wasn't sure he wanted to know the answer to that. Stealing his nerves, Naruto slowly began walking. At first, Naruto was afraid he was going to get lost, he made numerous turns just to follow the source of the breathing. Then Naruto almost laughed to himself. Lost. He had been lost since he got here. 
Soon Naruto came to a huge room with a gigantic cage on the other end. The word, seal, was written on it. Naruto was impressed by the mid size. Ah, Naruto jumped. Who's there? Show yourself. Naruto shouted. So my idiot host has finally come to see me. Naruto located the sound of the voice. It was coming from behind the cage. Naruto peered at it but couldn't see anything but pitch darkness. So he edged closer. Soon he was just a few feet from the cage. A mibai opened up and a claw swow to the edge of the cage. What the? Naruto jumped back in surprise. What are you? Where are we? Naruto shouted his questions at it. You fool, you should know who I am. The eye roared. No way, don't tell me you're the devil. On oh man, this really s, I knew I was in. Naruto balled himself up onto the ground and started rocking back and forth. You're not in dead. We are simply in your mindscape. Naruto looked up in surprise at the Mibai. I'm not dead. This is my mind. Naruto slowly stood back up. Then what the is something like you doing in my mind? Naruto pointed an accusing finger at the eye. You really are an idiot. The eye roared at him. Then Naruto saw it. The barest fare of a tail, of several tails. You, realization dawned on Naruto. You are that bad guy fox. Why I oughta kick your right now? Naruto was quickly overcome with anger. This was the thing that had caused him misery for his whole life. This was why he never had friends. Now he could see it, right in front of him. He could just strangle it he was so pissed. The fox roared with laughter. Go ahead brat. Rip this seal right off and you and I can have a good round. Naruto eyed the fox carefully. What happens to you if I die? Naruto finally asked. The fox's eye widened in surprise at the question. Vacuuming I am still sealed inside a twerp like you, I'd disappear for a while. But you'd come back. How long would it take? Naruto scratched his chin in thought. One year. One hundred years. Not even I would know that. Why does an idiot like you want to know? Naruto's questions confused the fox. So if I was in such a tough battle why didn't you help me out at all? Surely a big lug like you has some chakra to spare. Naruto pointed another accusing finger at the fox. Fool. Naruto was taken aback by the fox's newest insult. I sensed no animosity or defeat intent. If your life had been in danger I would have known it. That is why I didn't need to give you chakra. Naruto was about to say more but a drop of water hit him in the face. Did you just spit on me? Naruto asked in disgust. Two more drops hit him. No. The outside world is calling you back. Our conversation is over. The fox began to retreat farther into its cage. Hey, you fox. The fox turned its eye towards Naruto. I'm not an idiot. My name is Uzumaki Naruto and I'm going to be Hokage. Remember it. Naruto had been fading as he spoke and when he had completed his sentence he disappeared altogether. Naruto, the fox whispered. I'll definitely remember it when I'm ripping you to shreds. The fox grinned, revealing its mib teeth. Naruto hurt like all over. He slowly began to open his eyes. He had to close them when something wet hit them. That stings. Naruto ed. Naruto. Naruto recognized that voice. What's up, Inari? Naruto completely opened his eyes to see the shocked and teary face of the boy. He also saw Tazuna and Tsunami. You, you're alive. Inari was in complete shock. Dummy, of course I'm alive. Naruto began to sit up. I can't die until I become Hokage. No, don't strain yourself. Tsunami cautioned. How is everyone? Naruto ignored Tsunami and kept rising. They're all right. Tazuna answered while wiping his own tears away. Gatu and his men showed up and we teamed up with the those missed nin to beat them. Really? Man, that's going to take some explaining. Naruto was now standing. He looked over towards where his teammates were. He then looked over at Inari. What's with the getup? The boy was wearing a bunch of kitchenware like it was armor. I came to help out. Inari said proudly as he hefted up a tiny crossbow. I tried recruiting others in the village but they were all a bunch of scared white cats so I went to leave by myself. Of course, mom wouldn't let me so she followed. Naruto turned and looked at Inari's mom. She held a frying pan nervously. Hanada. Inari called over. Naruto. He's, Naruto is alive. Both of them looked over immediately. They saw Naruto standing there now, his eyes open. He slowly stuck his arm up and gave them a small wave. Naruto-kun. Naruto. Hanada felt new tears returning to her eyes. 
She couldn't believe it. Naruto was alive. She ran up to him as fast as she could. She slowed to a stop just in front of him. How's it going? Naruto tried to smile casually at her. Naruto-kun. Hanada leapt forward and gave Naruto the hardest hug she ever had in her life. She sobbed his name over and over into his shirt. I missed you too, Hanada. But your hug is crushing me. Naruto managed a pained smile as he patted her head. Lee stumbled a little. His muscles were still sore, it hurt to move, let alone run like he was, but nothing was going to stop him from reaching Naruto now. His best friend was alive. He was nearly there when he stumbled again. He fell right into his other two teammates and they all fell over together. Ow, it bushy brow. Naruto ed. He was at the bottom of the group. Sorry, Naruto. Lee grunted. Naruto couldn't help it, he started laughing. Lee looked down at him in surprise. Then he too started laughing. Hanada soon joined in, her tears ran down her face as she did. Looks like it worked out for everyone after all. Zabuza mumbled as he began to fall forward. He was exhausted. Too exhausted to even think about continuing his fight with Guy. That it does. Guy caught Zabuza before he fell and put his arm over his shoulder to support him. I owe you the lives of all my students. Thank you, Zabuza. I don't know what you're talking about. Zabuza looked away from the man who was helping him stand. Lee was a hostage, it would have been stupid to kill him. Besides, I only saved the girl. It was Haku who was too soft. But you were the one who found that boy. If you had found someone else I may have been short a student right now. Besides, I think his softness is rubbing off on you a little. You call Lee by his given name after all. Guy smiled brightly at him. Speaking of your pupil, we should see about getting him medical eye stance soon. Zabuza turned to look at Haku. It'll take more than that to kill Haku. He'll be okay. Guy laughed. We both have resilient pupils, huh? Zabuza looked up to see Lee helping his two teammates up, they were all still laughing. Yeah, we sure do. Chapter 10. Confessions Tazuna had been to awkward dinners before. But this was ridiculous. After the battle at the bridge, the two groups of ninja were taken back to Tazuna's house to receive medical attention. The Konoha Shinobi checked out okay with nothing but scratches and a couple deep cuts. Naruto wasn't injured at all. Zabuza had a few cracked ribs and some major bruising but it was nothing he couldn't handle. Haku was the one in the worst condition. On top of his arms being broken, and numerous cuts and gouges he had suffered internal damage to his lungs. He had finally woken up five minutes before dinner was being served and at Guy's insistence, the ex Kiri Nin stayed for it which led them into their current predicament. Um, Momochi-san, could you pee the soy sauce, please? Inari was the first to break the silence of the otherwise quiet dinner. Huh. Zabuza looked up in confusion. Then Inari's question registered. Oh, yeah, here you go. Zabuza ped the soy sauce to Inari. Thanks. Inari mumbled as he accepted it. Guy burst into laughter at the exchange, causing everyone but Lee and Naruto, who were immersed in their food, to jump. Not such a bad guy, once you get to know him, huh? Guy reached over and gave Zabuza a hard pat on the shoulder. Even demons know about table manners. Zabuza rubbed the spot Guy patted. Unlike those two students of yours. Hey, we're hungry, dying takes it out of a guy. Naruto said through a mouth full of food. The room grew quiet after Naruto's ill-worded sentence. The only sound in the room was Hanada's chopsticks as they snapped to pieces in her hands. She put her hands on the table and slowly stood up. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling very hungry at the moment. She turned and walked out of the house. Don't worry, Haku never has been good at making friends. Zabuza said offhandedly. Speak for yourself. Haku muttered. What was that? Zabuza looked over threateningly. Nothing. Haku replied a little too quickly. Ah. Naruto started to stand up. Then he paused. Hey, Haku, you haven't touched your food. It looks very delicious. However, someone broke my arms and I find it quite hard to eat without them. Haku attempted to move his arms in their splints to prove his point. They all got it well enough. Right, my bad. You know, thought you Naruto and all. I could feed you if you want. Lee picked up his chopsticks and began to try to feed Haku. No, no, that's okay. Zabuza Sans got me. Haku attempted to say politely. Zabuza snorted. A splendid idea. A teacher feeding his student in his time of need. You really are a good guy Zabuza. 
I'm not feeding him. And don't call me by my first name. Zabuza crossed his arms in defiance. Please, Zabuza-san, I'm really hungry. Haku opened his mouth wide. Tazuna smiled brightly. Finally a chance to get in the conversation. Yeah, Zabuza. Be a pal and feed the poor guy. The look Zabuza gave him shut him up for the rest of the night. That was the last thing Naruto saw as he snuck quietly out of the room after Hinata. He stepped outside and looked around. She was nowhere in sight. Of course this wouldn't be easy. Naruto sighed. Naruto. Lee's voice caused Naruto to jump up in surprise. We have to talk. Naruto turned around slowly to look at his teammate. Look, bushy brow, I got something else to fix first. Once I get Hinata to forgive me, we can settle this. Naruto had a good idea what Lee wanted to talk about and he didn't want to discuss it. No, we are going to talk about the Kyubi, right now. Naruto hated it when he was right. Good thing it wasn't very often he was right. What's to discuss? I was conscious when you said you accepted me. I don't know a lot of the details myself if that's what you want. Naruto raised his hands in front of himself defensively. Lee shook his head. That is not it. You have to tell Hinata. What? No way. She's pissed off right now, there's bound to be a better time. Besides, what's it matter to you? Naruto shrugged Lee's words off. We are teammates, of course it is important. Lee took a breath. Anyways, Hinata and I kind of tried to find out on our own. We did not come up with the answer. We were supposed to find out together. Of course, because of the law, and because I respect your privacy, I cannot tell her myself. Lee smiled sheepishly. You guys what? Naruto's mouth hung open in shock. What is done, is done. We wanted to know but figured you would not tell us. Lee was defensive now. Well you know why now. Don't you understand why I don't want anyone else to know? Naruto was practically yelling now. You know Hinata would accept you, do you not? Lee's voice was barely above a whisper. Naruto, who had been ready to shout again, paused. You're right, bushy brow. I'm sorry. I'll tell her, I swear. Just not right now. Lee smiled at him. Thank you, Naruto. Now go find Hinata. Lee gave him the thumbs up. Naruto returned the gesture. Will do. I'll be back with her in no time. He turned around and ran off into the forest. Hinata was crouched over the side of the river. She was washing her hands, again. Hinata found herself washing them whenever the thought of Gedu's death crossed her mind. She was scrubbing fiercely now. Soon, her hands were bleeding from the rough way she was treating them. I'm such an idiot. She finally leaned back. She sat the edge of the water, watching her reflection. Her hands dripped blood onto the ground. Why did I have to make a scene like that? Everyone else is trying to get along. A tear slid from her face and hit the running water. Hinata. Hinata jumped in surprise. She turned her head just in time to see Naruto emerge from the brush. There you are. Naruto smiled down at her. I've been looking everywhere for, what happened to your hands? The smile on Naruto's face was replaced by a concerned frown. Her hands were raw, red, and bleeding. Oh, it's nothing. Hinata stood up and placed her hands behind her back. It's not nothing. Show them to me. Naruto snarled as he walked up. He stood inches from Hinata. She looked away from him nervously. Hinata. The sternness in his voice caused Hinata to meet his eyes. Once she did, she wasn't able to refuse him. She slowly moved her hands from behind her back and held them up for Naruto to see. He grabbed her wrists and pulled them even closer. Hinata blushed from the contact. Who did this to you? Naruto's voice came out feral. No one did it to me. It was, I did it, Naruto-kun. The anger in Naruto's eyes disappeared. Confusion took its place. To yourself. But why, Hinata? Why would you do this to yourself? Naruto was trying to fathom ideas in his head as to why. He wasn't able to come up with any. You heard about what happened after you, after you pet out. Hinata couldn't bring herself to use the, D, word. Huh. Yeah I did. I heard how you kicked a bunch of. You even the head boss. Naruto brightened momentarily. That's the problem. Hinata shouted. Naruto's mouth fell open in shock. What do you mean? I a man, Naruto-kun. I him and didn't even think twice about it. Naruto was caught completely off guard by this outburst. Hinata never shouted. In fact, I was happy when he died. To me, I had avenged you. I'm an awful person. I feel like a demon. That's not true. Naruto interrupted Hinata. 
he gripped a little harder on her wrists. Hanada, you're not a bad person. Do you know what that man has done to this country? You did these people a huge favor. You freed them. That doesn't mean I had to enjoy defeat him. Hanada interrupted him now. Enjoying someone's death is something demons do. You're not a demon. I would know. I talked with a real one today. They both stopped shouting for a minute after Naruto's latest outburst. What do you mean? Hanada broke the silence, with a much quieter voice. Naruto let go of her wrists and looked away now. Naruto-kun. When I went under, I woke up in my subconscious. Naruto still wasn't facing her. While I was down there. I met the Kyubi no Yoko. What? Hanada's head was spinning. The Kyubi no Yoko. How could you have talked to it? The Yandaimi it, unless, that's right. He didn't kill it. He sealed it inside of a newborn infant. Naruto finally met her eyes. Inside of you. Hanada said the words but she wasn't even aware of it. Her mind was in a distant place. All thoughts of Geitu and her guilt were gone. Everything snapped into place. Naruto's Mib Chakra Reserves, the seal, the villagers hate. The law, the reason the villagers hate you. It's all because of that. Naruto didn't see where this was going. A second ago it had been about cheering her up. Well ye, idiots. Hanada lunged into Naruto and hugged him hard. What? Naruto stumbled backwards slightly from her newest hug. The whole village is just a big group of idiots. I can't believe they would treat you that way for something so stupid. Tears welled up in her eyes. If Naruto hadn't been in shock before, he was now. Silence settled around them for a few moments as he let her words sink in. When they did, he burst into laughter. Hanada, tears stopped momentarily from the surprise. She was about to ask why he was laughing but Naruto finally returned the hug. This motion brought Hanada completely back into reality. She started to blush heavily. They may be idiots, but were sworn to protect them. Naruto released the hug and took a couple steps backwards. He was now an arm's length away. Besides, they're not all bad, some really good people live there too. Naruto smiled brightly at her. It'll be a while before I'll able to forgive any of them. Hanada wiped away the last of her tears. Suddenly another thought hit Hanada. Lee Senpei needs to, he already knows. Naruto interrupted. Hanada's eyes widened. I told him when I thought I was going to die. Speaking of which. Can't you forgive Haku? I mean, he purposely avoided my vitals. If it had been anyone else, I might actually be dead. I know you must be mad. I mean, I'd be mad if I thought one of my friends was too. Hanada stared quietly at Naruto for a minute. He felt himself growing kind of nervous under her intense gaze. He couldn't even begin to fathom what was running through her head now. It will be very difficult for me to forgive him, Naruto-kun. Yeah I, please listen. Naruto stopped. Hanada didn't often interrupt people. You said you would be mad if you thought a friend had died. Naruto nodded, even more confused. Lee Senpei has already forgiven Haku. Maybe it's because he feels bad because he broke his arms. Or maybe it's because he views you as just a friend. But to me, Naruto-kun, I like you as more than just a friend. Hanada took a step toward him. Oh, you mean like best friend. Naruto snapped his fingers. Yeah, I can see how that could make it a little harder. No, Naruto-kun, not like a best friend. Hanada stepped closer to him again. You mean like siblings then? Naruto was confused again. Hanada shook her head as she took yet another step towards him. She was right in front of him again. I don't understand, what? Naruto was cut off as Hanada wrapped her arms around his neck and leaned in, capturing his with hers. Naruto's eyes grew to the size of saucers. What the was going on? Was hanada ing him? But why? Did that mean that she liked him in the way it was implying? Surely it must. Since when though? All these thoughts ran through his head in less than two seconds. Which also happened to be the length of the. Hanada pulled back and looked dreamily at his shocked face. I'm sorry. But I had to let you know. The only sign she got that he even heard were his eyes as they focused in on her face. If this mission has taught me anything, it's that I could lose you at a moment's notice. I confessed earlier but you weren't conscious. So I will again. Naruto-kun. I love you. Naruto just kept staring. Hanada paused for a second and then continued. I don't expect you to love me back, but like I said, you had to know. Hanada bowed her head to him and then bolted past in a dead sprint. She disappeared from sight before Naruto even moved. Thing was, Naruto couldn't bring himself to move. 
It was like his mind had completely shut down on him. He couldn't even summon up the will to internally yell at himself. Something he was sure he needed right at the moment. Finally, he was able to slowly turn his body in the direction Hinata had ran. As he did, he brought his hand to his and touched them. Everything registered at once to him. I'm such an idiot. He held his head with both hands and shouted. What the am I doing standing here like a statue? Hinata's probably more upset than ever. Wasting no time, Naruto took back off after her. He didn't know what he was going to say but he couldn't leave things the way they were. He could only hope he got to her before she ran into someone else. Naruto didn't get very far before he almost ran straight into his teacher. Naruto stopped short and tripped. Guy, who had been running on his hands through the forest, jumped to his feet and helped his student to his feet. Naruto. It warms my heart to see you keeping up with your exercise, but you must watch where you are going. A sprained ankle will ruin any ninja's day. Guy sensei, did you see Hinata run by? Naruto frantically looked to see if he could see her at all. He completely ignored what his sensei had said. Hinata. I haven't seen her since she left the house. I thought you would have found her by now. It's been a while. Guy's voice became laced with concern. Well, I did find her. But she ran off again. Naruto didn't meet his sensei's eyes. Did you two get in a fight? Guy peered curiously at his student. He wasn't acting like his usual self. No, not a fight. It was more of a misunderstanding. Naruto shuffled his feet nervously. Guy rubbed his chin thoughtfully. A misunderstanding huh? She didn't happen to tell you anything private did she? Naruto froze. He slowly looked up to meet his sensei's gaze. How did you know? Guy smiled brightly. I am your sensei. There is nothing about my cute students that is hidden from me. Now let me guess, you didn't know how to respond and she ran off while you were in a stupor. Naruto's jaw hit the floor. Guy sensei. You have to tell me what to do. I don't know where Hinata went. I gotta make this right though. That a boy Naruto. Guy wrapped his arm around Naruto's shoulders. She must have went back to the house. Now run back there and pour out your feelings upon her. He pointed towards the direction of the house. Yes, Guy sensei As soon as I figure out my feelings for her Naruto added mentally as he took off towards the house. The house came into view before Naruto even completely left the forest. Sitting on the porch was Zabuza. He was sharpening his Miv sword. Naruto ignored his presence completely as he ran up to the door. He grabbed the handle and was prepared to fling the door open. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Naruto paused. He looked back at Zabuza. He was still sharpening his sword, wasn't even looking in Naruto's direction. Yet he was sure he had heard Zabuza speak. Why's that? Naruto's hand sped away from the handle. That teammate of yours ran back in tears. The bridge builder's daughter got a look at her and went into a blind rage, she kicked all the men out of the house so they could have girl time. That never bodes well. Zabuza spoke nonchalantly and continued to sharpen his blade. If you are indeed, the cause of her tears, then going in there would be suicide for you. But it's because she's crying that I have to go in. Zabuza stopped sharpening. He inspected his sword carefully and ran a finger up its length. He then stabbed it into the ground. Tell me, what do you plan to say to her to stop her tears? He finally turned to look at Naruto. I don't know yet, but I gotta make things better. Naruto started to reach for the handle again. Charging in head first won't make things better without a plan. That's a basic lesson in all ninja academies. Zabuza slammed his hand on the deck. This isn't a mission, this is comforting a friend. Naruto turned back to Zabuza. You can apply mission tactics to real life and vice versa. Use your head. Go in there now and you'll only make her cry more. Sort out your feelings first. Zabuza turned away from Naruto in disgust. Feelings. How the do you know what this is about, did Hinata tell you? Naruto pointed an accusing finger at the mist ninja. Don't be so naive. Anyone could see what's going on here. Naruto lowered his finger. Were her feelings that obvious? Naruto's hair cast a shadow over his eyes. I'd say so, she did take on a miniature army for you, after all. Naruto walked over and sat down next to Zabuza. His eyes were still downcast. Zabuza, what would you do? The ex-Kiri ninja sighed. What is it with you people and using my first name? Half a day ago we were enemies. He glared at Naruto but he didn't react. Zabuza sighed again. How the should I know what to do? 
being known as the demon of the bloody mist didn't exactly attract the ladies. Why don't you ask your other teammate? Naruto finally looked forward. You're right. I'm going to figure this out no matter what. Naruto stood up. Haku and that clone went to the docks to go fishing, you'll find them there. Zabuza gestured in the general direction they were at. Thanks a lot Zabuza. Naruto took off running. Quit using my first name. Or at least add an honorific. Zabuza shouted after Naruto as he ran away. Zabuza waited until Naruto was out of sight to stand up and pick his sword back up. It all. I really am getting too soft. Naruto arrived at the docks and started scanning down the line of them, looking for his teammate. Naruto. Naruto turned to see Inari running up to him. He had a board game in his hand. He stopped just in front of the blonde. Inari. What's up? Naruto rubbed his head affectionately. I'm borrowing this game from my uncle so grandpa and I can play. You heard what happened back at home. Inari held up the game to show Naruto. Yeah, I heard. Naruto shuffled nervously at the subject. So what brings you here Naruto? Inari was oblivious to the older boy's fidgeting. I'm looking for Haku and Lee. Naruto noticed Inari's eyebrows furrow a little. What's the matter? I don't get it. Inari said reluctantly. Don't get what? Naruto felt a little better. He wasn't the only one who didn't understand things today. How can you guys be some chummy with Haku and Zabuza? They tried to kill you. No one is that forgiving. Inari stared hard at Naruto waiting for an answer. Naruto smiled down at Inari. It's not easy to explain but here it goes. It's because we understand each other. Understand each other. Inari looked even more confused. When Geitu betrayed Zabuza we had to team up to stay alive. When you've fought with another person to stay alive a special bond is formed between you. You two share that bond with us as well. You just don't realize it. I guess I understand. Inari still looked a little miffed. If you don't like that answer then how about this one? Naruto offered. It's because we're guys. What's that have to do with it? This answer confused Inari more than before. We always get into fights. Sometimes those fights are with your best friends. After it's all over though, we laugh about it and move on. It's what guys do. Inari stared at Naruto for another minute. That's confusing. He finally said. Not nearly confusing as girls, trust me. Naruto patted Inari on the shoulder and walked past to continue his search. It didn't take him too long to find the two of them. They were both sitting at the edge of one of the many docks. Lee had a fishing line in the water and Haku appeared to be in some kind of meditation. Naruto approached quietly. Just as he got there the fishing line gave a slight tug. Haku's eyes popped open. Now Lee San. Right. Lee pulled the line out with all of his strength. This turned out to be a bad idea. The fish came flying out from the water, but the force of the pull quickly sent it flying. Not long after, it landed in the water, far away from the dock. That was pretty awesome. Naruto stared out towards the sea in awe. No, it wasn't. Lee San, I told you to control yourself. It took us a while to get the fish to come back after you scared them all off with your voice. Haku would have rubbed his temple if his arms weren't broken. I apologize, Haku-kun. Lee began to add a new worm to the line. I will get it this time. If not, I will catch 100 fish with my bare hands. Haku started at him quietly. Don't worry, he's always like this. Naruto plopped down in between them. Naruto. Have you come to clash wills with the fish as well? Lee cast the line back into the water. There won't be any fish to catch if you keep shouting. Haku mumbled, closing his eyes again. You meditating or something? Naruto peered at Haku curiously. I can feel the fish as they move through the water. It is easier to sense them with my eyes closed. Haku didn't even open his eyes to answer. That's cool, anyway, I came to ask for advice. Naruto scratched the back of his head as he turned back to Lee. Advice? What kind of advice do you need? Lee peered curiously at his teammate. Naruto was often too proud to ask for advice on things. Well, um, how do I put this? Naruto spun his hands around in the air as he tried to find the right words. How about I ask this? What do you like about Ayame Ne Chan? Naruto finally asked. She is an incredibly attractive woman. Lee didn't hesitate at all. She comes off stern but really that is just because she really cares about people. She is outspoken and lets me know exactly what is on her mind. I find these characteristics most youthful. I am most grateful to you for introducing us. 
Li smiled brightly to himself. His thoughts of Ayame quickly pulling him from reality. Naruto scratched his chin. That didn't help at all, actually. Perhaps if Li San knew why you were asking, he could help give better insight. Haku threw out, eyes still closed. Naruto sighed. I guess you're right. Okay Li, what I'm about to tell you is very secret. Hardly anyone knows about this all right. Li pulled himself out of his thoughts and nodded vigorously. Okay, here it is. Hanada, is in love with me. A moment of silence followed. So she finally told you. What the, you knew? Naruto pointed an accusing finger at his teammate. It was obvious to everyone. Naruto whipped his finger towards Haku. Why the was I the only one left out of the loop here? Didn't anyone feel the need to tell me? Naruto held his head. How could she go around even telling you and Zabuza? She didn't tell me anything, I very much doubt she confided that information in Zabuza-san as well. Naruto looked at Haku in surprise. Then he turned to Lee questioningly. Sorry, she did not tell me either. Lee smiled sadly at his teammate. Naruto's face lowered. She never really was sick, huh? Naruto sounded defeated. No, she was blushing because you were there with her. Lee confirmed. So, she did confess to you. Yeah. How did you respond? Lee leaned in curiously. I didn't. Huh. Lee drew back like he'd been slapped. What do you mean you did not? What happened? I didn't do anything, okay. She caught me completely off guard. First she ed me and then she told me how she felt. I was so confused that I didn't know what to do. I'm still confused. She ran off crying and now I'm stuck. What the do I say to her? Naruto panted after his outburst. Lee looked at him closely. He could see the pleading in Naruto's eyes. He was truly lost. Could it be that you want to turn her down but do not know how? No, that's not it. Naruto shook his head. Then just tell her you want to go out. Lee replied simply. That's no good either. Naruto kept shaking his head. Lee's bushy brows furrowed. I do not understand. What is it you want to do then? That's what I'm asking you. How am I supposed to respond? Lee felt the line tug. Lee sand pull now. Haku shouted. Lee reacted quickly and pulled not quite so hard this time. The fish came flying out of the water and landed gently on the dock. It flapped around for a few moments and then lay completely still. They all stared quietly at it. You are asking the wrong question, Naruto-san. Before you can decide what to do, you must decide how you feel. How I feel? Naruto turned to look at Haku. Yes, now tell us, how do you feel about Hinata-san? Put your feelings into words. Haku's eyes were wide open as he talked to Naruto now. I don't know how I feel. I mean, it's Hinata. Naruto looked away from Haku's gaze. That's not good enough. Just, Hinata, tells everyone nothing. Let's try it this way. Do you hate her? Naruto's head snapped around at the question. Of course not. Naruto met Haku's eyes. Then do you dislike her? Haku pressed on. No, I like Hinata. She's the nicest person I've ever met. Naruto held his gaze. But you don't love her. Haku clarified. I don't know that. He finally looked away again. Don't look away. Haku barked. Meet my gaze. Naruto slowly brought his eyes back to meet his. You say you don't know. But I think the truth is, you're afraid to know. Why is that? Naruto's eyes grew wide. He let the question go unanswered for a minute. Finally, his eyes looked resigned. You're wrong. I'm not afraid. The thing is, I'm not sure if I know how to love. Haku raised an eyebrow at him. Don't know how. Yeah that's right. You heard me tell Bushy Brow about my past. I grew up all alone. I had no family, no one who cared for me. I had to learn how to survive by watching everyone else. When I joined the academy, I saw how all the girls threw themselves at Sasuke and always professed their love to him. I thought that was all there was to it. I threw myself at this girl I was sure I was in love with. But now, Hinata who acted completely different, confessed to me, I don't know what to think anymore. Haku searched Naruto's eyes quietly. He finally seemed satisfied. Tell me, do you think Hinata is attractive? Haku finally asked. Attractive. Naruto's eyes widened again. You know, pretty, beautiful, wow. However you want to word it. Haku's voice stayed monotone. Naruto blushed. Well, um, I don't know. It's a simple yes or no. Is she attractive to you or isn't she? Haku said sternly. She's cute, okay. Naruto blushed harder. Haku looked satisfied. 
You said earlier that she is the nicest person you've ever met. What is it about her that made you said that? She always puts others before herself. She compliments me when I do things right. She doesn't get mad or hit me when I do things wrong. When she smiles, it's always sincerely and I've never heard her tell a lie since I've met her. Naruto couldn't explain it, but he felt incredibly comfortable around Haku all of a sudden. He felt like he could tell him anything. Compared to the other girls in the village, do you like Hinata more? Haku continued his questioning without pause. Definitely. All the other girls are, Sasuke-kun this. Sasuke-kun that. Not Hinata though. Naruto wanted to spit. Just thinking about the others put a bad taste in his mouth now. Suddenly it hit Naruto like a ton of bricks. He even felt that way about Sakura now. What the heck was happening to him? Naruto's internal confusion grew a little. How would you feel if Hinata started going out with another guy? How about this Sasuke-san you brought up? Lee watched with growing interest as Haku asked his questions. He was really getting to the point. Naruto felt his mind freeze. Hinata go out with Sasuke. Not possible. Naruto told himself more than the others. Pretend it was. Pretend it actually happened. How would you feel? Naruto tried picturing it. He was surprised when he felt his chest physically hurting. That's not all he felt though. I feel pissed. I wouldn't stand for something like that. Naruto growled out. Haku smiled slightly at his answer. Far as I can tell, the only thing keeping you from loving Hinata is your own misconception about love. Haku said bluntly. Come again. Haku's smile dropped. You are concerned that you don't know how to love. That is all that is holding you back from opening yourself to your teammate. Haku said slowly. So you're saying, that I might already love her, I just don't know it yet. Naruto scratched his head in confusion. Close enough. Haku broke his eye contact and stood up. Naruto sat still for a minute, blinking rapidly the whole time. He finally stood up. Thanks a lot Haku. I think I know what to say now. I'll talk to you guys later. Naruto waved and then dashed off the way he had come. Lee, who had sat quietly the whole time, stood up and walked up next to Haku. What did you do to him? He asked. Oh, nothing much. I just got him to be honest with himself. Haku had a sly smile on his face. Now, let's get more fish. One definitely isn't enough. Yash, would you like a turn Haku-kun? Lee held out the pole towards the feminine boy. Haku looked down at his own arms. Lee followed his gaze. Right. Sorry, I'll go for you then. Lee stiffly walked back to his spot. Naruto raced back to the house. When he got there, Zabuza was no longer on the porch. Instead, Tazuna and Inari sat there playing the board game Inari had been carrying earlier. Naruto ignored them like he did with Zabuza. He marched up to the door and put his hand on the knob. Wouldn't do that, Tazuna said. Tsunamis, upset, I know, but I know what I'm going to say this time. Without any further ado, Naruto opened the door and walked in, leaving a bewildered Inari and Tazuna. Naruto stepped into the kitchen but didn't see anyone. So he walked into the next room. There, he saw Tsunami and Hinata sitting on the couch. Hinata wasn't crying at this point and her hands were now bandaged. They had a pot of tea sitting in front of them and Tsunami seemed happy enough. Maybe this wouldn't be so bad after all. Naruto's train of thought was broke off as Tsunami turned and looked at him. Her smiling face was instantly replaced by a dark scowl. Just in time, Tsunami snarled. I've got a bone to pick with you. She sat up and started to cross the room. Naruto gulped but stood firm. Please, let me talk to Hinata first. Naruto said boldly. Alone. After I'm done you can say whatever you want. Tsunami stopped right in front of him. She glared down at him. Why should I? She put her hands on her hips. You shouldn't, please. Naruto interrupted. He knew he was taking a risk here, but he wasn't going to be deterred. Tsunami glared at him for another second before she turned to look at Hinata. What do you say? Hinata looked down and blushed heavily. Pushing her index fingers together, she finally spoke. I'll talk to him. Tsunami looked back at Naruto reluctantly. You have five minutes. She stormed towards the door. She opened it only to have Inari and Tazuna stumble in. How many times have I told you guys not to lean on the door to listen to people? You two haven't changed at all. Naruto flinched as he heard the door slam. He was still looking at Hinata who sat on the couch. Naruto took a few deep breaths to steady his heart rate. Hinata. She looked up and locked eyes with him. 
Naruto swallowed and walked over to where she was. He sat down on the opposite side of the couch. I'm sorry. Naruto finally said. No. I'm the one who is sorry, Naruto-kun. Hanada said quickly. She took a breath to say more but Naruto shook his head at her. You're not at fault here, Hanada. Please listen to me, this is my answer to your confession. Hanada's mouth snapped shut. Her blush remained on her face. Thank you, for confessing to me, but you know, I haven't even really known you all that long. We do train together every day but we don't really hang out. I always thought of you as a really good friend, but never as a girlfriend. Hanada looked down sadly. Saying it like that is kind of rude, huh? Naruto joked slightly. But, if it's okay with you, do you want to try going out? Hanada looked up in surprise. Eh. Well, I mean, we're going to get to know each other better anyways, aren't we? If that's the case, saying we are going out, instead of just being friends during the time would be kind of nice. Naruto rubbed the back of his neck. So then, Hanada couldn't believe what she was hearing. This was like a conversation she thought doomed to stay in her dreams. So then starting from now on, you're my girlfriend, alright? Naruto did his best to make himself look as confident as his words sounded. Tears started to slide down Hanada's face. They started coming too fast for her to stop. She began wiping them away. He hey. Naruto stuttered. This wasn't the reaction he had been expecting. I'm sorry, Naruto-kun. Hanada wiped away more tears. The tears just won't stop coming. I'm happy. She paused to wipe away more tears. I'm so happy. Naruto smiled awkwardly at her. So how did it go? Lee asked from where he lay on the ground. He, Naruto, Zabuza, Haku, and Guy were all sleeping in the living room. Hanada had gotten to sleep in Tsunami's room with her and Tazuna and Inari each took their own rooms as normal. Well, it went pretty good, actually. Naruto mumbled, a deep blush on his face. He was glad it was so dark. No one was able to see his face this way. What does good mean? Haku called from the couch. They had all agreed that he could have it since his arms were broken. Are you two going out or did you shoot her down and she took it well? Since when did you care about others and their relationships, Haku? Zabuza actually spoke up. I don't want to hear that from you right now, Zabuza-san. From what I hear, you also gave him advice. Zabuza had nothing to say to that. We're going out now. Naruto took the chance to answer Haku's question. Although honestly, it doesn't feel like anything has changed. Is it supposed to be like that? Feelings don't just change overnight. It'll take time for you to actually feel it. Zabuza muttered quietly but everyone heard him. I told you, you're getting soft. Guy chuckled from his corner of the room. Don't make me get my sword. Zabuza knew his threat was empty, but he said it anyways. Speaking of the manner of your new relationship, Naruto. We have to talk now. Guy ignored the threat and addressed his student. Huh. What do you mean, Guy-sensei? Naruto didn't like the tone of his sensei's voice. It's nothing big, just information that I am obligated to pee to you as your sensei. Guy waved off Naruto's worries. It is not uncommon for ninja in the same team to fall in love and enter into a relationship, but you should understand that there are guidelines the two of you have to follow now. Guidelines. No one had mentioned this to him. Yes, again, it's nothing big, just standard. Guy again attempted to ease his students' worries. The first one is simple. Never let your personal feelings get in the way of the mission. Just because you're in love doesn't mean you can throw away the mission to be with her. Sounds easy enough. Naruto sighed in relief. These wouldn't be so bad. Next. No sex during a mission. This is Bay. what the air you saying? We're not even close to that yet. We do, Naruto's mouth was clamped shut by Lee. She will wake everyone up. That was the last thing Naruto ever wanted to hear from Lee who was constantly shouting himself. I'm being serious here Naruto. Don't disregard these rules just because they seem impractical now. Guy warned his student. Whatever, tell me more tomorrow, I'm going to sleep. Naruto rolled over and placed his pillow over the top of his head. Zabuza chuckled. How childish. I never noticed how big of a hypocrite you were until today Zabuza-san. What was that? Zabuza swow up but Haku appeared to be snoring in his sleep. We'll see how funny you think that is when I have Lee feeding you tomorrow. Zabuza plopped back down. No one said anything else the rest of the night, but Haku did have nightmares about Zabuza's threat. 
The next day, all the shinobi except Haku were busily running around the bridge as they helped to construct it. How the did this happen? Zabuza grumbled out curses as he continued to work. You were so racked with guilt that you decided to lend us a hand. Guy answered enthusiastically. He was doing twice the workload of everyone else. No, I mean how come it is only a shinobi helping construct this bridge? What about the others in this village? What Zabuza said was true. Other than Tazuna, they were the only ones here on the bridge working on it. This village is a bunch of stuck-up jerks. That's what happened. Once I finish building this bridge for them, I'm moving out of this country. I'm sick of it. Tazuna continued to hammer away at the support beams. Why not move into Konoha? There were Naruto's running around everywhere. This was the first time Guy had ever given him permission to make more than three clones. Konoha, huh? Tazuna stopped working and gazed at the sky as he thought. That doesn't sound half bad actually, you think they would be in need of a construction worker like myself. Tazuna smiled brightly at the thought. I'm sure that once we told them about how brave you or you would have job offers flying in from every company in the village. Guy boomed from the other side of the bridge. They might even try to make you a shinobi. Lee joked as he brought over a large sum of wooden planks. A shinobi, huh? Hey, I bet you if they did, it'd only take a couple months before they made me Hokage. Tazuna let out a big laugh as all the Naruto's around him shook their heads. Speaking of bringing people back, what are we going to do about Zabuza and Haku-kun? Lee jogged up to his sensei as he asked his question. That's a good question. I would like to bring them back if we could, but we have to consider our relationship with Karigakur after all. Come the next Chunin exams there will be no hiding either of them. Wars have been started on less, after all. Guy set down his workload and scratched his chin thoughtfully. Certainly we could make a deal with them. Or at least hide the fact that we took them. Why don't we say they are our prisoners? Guy shook his head to all Lee's suggestions. None of those will do. We need something better than that. Guy rubbed his chin thoughtfully as he stared at the topics of their conversation. How about they were working for Konoha the whole time? Guy perked up at Lee's newest suggestion. Explain that. Guy was curious as to where he was going with this. Konoha could have hired Zabuza to sneak into Geitu's employ and act as a double agent. When we got the information we needed, we staged a battle to draw Geitu out of hiding. When that was successful, we took Geitu's life. It was all one big test to see if Zabuza could be trusted. Since he wasn't really an enemy it would also explain why the Hokage sent fresh genin on such a mission. There was no actual ninja opponent so it still counts as AC rank for us. Surely Karigakur couldn't complain if we decided to make him our own that way. Guy ran what Lee just said through his head several times. With some adjusting, that might work. Guy smiled brightly. Good job, Lee. Thank you, Guy sensei Guy nodded at him and turned to everyone on the bridge. He cleared his throat to get their attention. It's been decided. Guy announced. Zabuza and Haku shall come back to the Konoha with us. Everyone but Guy himself jumped as a loud clang hit the bridge. Zabuza, who had been holding onto a huge pile of wood, dropped them down in surprise. Suddenly his face contorted in anger. What the do you think you're talking about? Why should I go back to the village with you? I will not be anyone's prisoner. I'll fight to the death first. Zabuza began to reach for his sword. Not as a prisoner. As one of us. Zabuza looked surprised. Haku also couldn't hide the emotion from his face. Guy began to explain Lee's plan to them. You mean, we could really be the shinobi of a village. Haku whispered in awe. That's right. The Hokage is a kind man. He'd agree to the plan in no time. It'd be easy to make it look true. A smile broke onto Haku's face. This was like a dream come true. He turned to Zabuza in excitement only to have his hopes dashed. Zabuza did not look pleased with the idea. What makes you think I want to join your village? I have a dream to become the Mizukage. I can't do that if I'm part of Konoha. Haku was right. Zabuza was not pleased. Not one bit. There are ways around that. We may not be in an alliance with Kiri right now, but it won't be that way forever. Someday, there is bound to be a way to get you back there. For now, this gets you off the missing Nin list. You don't have to live in hiding. Guy implored Zabuza to see his reason. I am doing this for you. You don't have to do anything for me. I've always been fine on my own. I don't need someone else now. I especially don't need an entire village. Zabuza spat. 
what the is Haku to you then? Naruto shouted this time. Zabuza had gone too far. Isn't he your friend? Haven't you relied on him for years? How can you say you don't need anybody? Haku is a tool, nothing more. What would you know? Zabuza glared at him. You don't believe that and you know it. You have a kind side but you're just afraid of showing it. But I saw it yesterday. You helped me out when I was at my worst. It's thanks to you that I didn't make things worse. Naruto panted from his outburst. Zabuza was about to respond but Guy cut him off. In the end of it all, you really were concerned about Haku. It had been you who bandaged his arm. It was you and finally fed him his food yesterday. He means something to you. Can't you see he wants to have a home? Can't you at least give him that? Zabuza didn't respond. He turned to look at Haku. For a minute Haku looked back at him but then looked away. I am to be used as you see fit, Zabuza-san. I exist solely for fulfilling your dream. Nothing else. Zabuza closed his eyes. Those were the words Haku had said to him when they fled from Kiri. When they had lost their home. Well said, child. Okay, we'll go to Konoha. Haku spun around to look at him in surprise. You need time to heal somewhere. Besides, they have numerous training grounds. You can become truly strong there and together we'll make my dream a reality. Haku couldn't hide his huge smile. After only a week of work the shinobi had managed to complete the bridge. Having accomplished this task they now stood with their backpacks and gear, ready to depart the village. Zabuza and Haku didn't have much so the shirtless man was able to carry both of their stuff since Haku's arms were still broken. The group just had to wait for a couple more people before they departed. Hey. They all turned at the sound of Tazuna's voice. The old man, Tsunami, and Inari were all walking up to the group, bags on each of their backs as well. Sorry we took so long, thanks for waiting. Tazuna bowed to all the shinobi. Guy waved his apology off. It is no problem, it takes time to prepare. Are you sure about this though? I know we offered but I never thought you would actually leave the country that has been your home for your whole life. Yeah, I finished this bridge for them. These ungrateful bad guys are lucky I even did that. Far as I'm concerned it's good riddance. Tazuna patted Inari on the head before he continued speaking. Besides, this place is full of nothing but sad memories for Inari. It'll do us all some good to make a fresh start. I'm glad to see you are resolute about your decision. I promise you will all enjoy yourselves in Konoha. Guy smiled happily at the family in front of him. Well then, let's get going. Naruto turned and pointed down the bridge. I can't wait to get home and show you around the village. It wasn't too long ago and you couldn't wait to leave the village. Lee laughed at his friend as the group started moving down the long bridge. Hey, the mission is pretty much over. We got to get back so we can get another one. Naruto crossed his arms and attempted to look miffed. I think it'll be a while before I'm ready to go on another C rank mission. My heart isn't as full of youth as it used to be, it almost stopped so many times. Guy actually looked visibly sick from the thought of everything that had occurred over the past few weeks. If I was the type of guy, I would apologize to you for all the misfortune. Zabuza chuckled darkly. You never know, hanging around with this group might change you faster than you think. Tazuna couldn't describe the feeling he had right now. If he had to guess, he'd say he felt younger than he had in a long time. Like some hard burden had just been lifted from his shoulders. Regardless of what it was, it was incredible, and he owed it all to the shinobi he walked beside now. Say, Tazuna-san. The old bridge builder was pulled from his reflection by Haku's soft voice. I was wondering, since we finished this bridge, shouldn't we give it a name? You didn't notice, we already named it. It was Inari who spoke up for Tazuna instead. We'll see the sign for it when we reach the other end. Oh, I didn't notice. What is it called? Haku sounded surprised that they were already ahead of him. Well, I tell you, at first I had a hard time thinking up a suitable name. Tazuna had been waiting for an opportunity to give this speech. But then I got thinking about how we came to be able to complete it. It was thanks to the fact that two group of enemy ninja teamed up. It was by bonding and working together that in the end we were all able to accomplish my dream. Tazuna looked down at Naruto and Hinata who were holding hands as they walked down the bridge. The bridge that connected not just two countries, but two groups of people. Tazuna wiped the tears from his eyes. The Great Bridge of Unity. Thank you for listening. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author. 
See you guys in the next video.